Uh, well, everyone, and thanks for joining this IPCC side event on uh, regional climate information with uh, focus on Africa. Um, for our agenda today, uh, we're going to have um, a plenary session uh, during which uh, Nana Brown Kluche will uh, give an overview presentation on the key messages of the IPCC report uh, on Africa. And then after that, we'll have a Q&A session. And uh, we plan to have uh, a session on the interactive atlas after that, but um, uh, the responsible for the interactive atlas is running late, so we'll see uh, until the end of uh, the Q&A session, if they arrive, then we'll have an interactive at last. If not, uh, we'll go to a breakout, uh, breakout group uh, session uh, during which you can uh, ask and discuss on the key messages uh, from the IPCC on different regions of Africa. So we have uh, a group discussing on North West Africa and the Sahara region and also uh, one, group, one group on um, Central and East Africa, and the third group on uh, Southern Africa. So without further ado, uh, Nana, the floor is yours. So my name is Nana Brown Kluche. I'm from the University of Ghana. I also work with Ames African Institute of Mathematical Sciences in Rwanda. Yeah, so I'm a lead author in the ATLAS for this uh, state assessment report. And I'm going to present you an overview of the regional information from Africa. Uh, this presentation is prepared by myself, Rifran, and Bamba, and uh, thanks to the other lead authors in the IPCC. We take inspiration from the three Nobel Prize winners of, of this year, uh, and we have all three in physics from climate, and two of them were uh, lead authors in this assessment yeah, report. Thank problem. you. Okay, so I said we take inspiration from this year's three Nobel Prize winners in climate, so I mean in physics, all came from climate. And two of the winners are lead authors in this assessment report. Now I start with a, with a background comparing the issues of climate change and COVID-19. We all witnessed the agency, the globe, the world took to um, curbing this pandemic, COVID-19. We don't seem to be seeing the climate change as, as such, but then I use the boiling frog uh, fable as um, an example. Um, the issues of climate change is coming slowly, we are witnessing it, but it's because it doesn't come with that agency as COVID-19 has come with, we seem to be still lingering and uh, not taking the agent attention. I'm happy we are in COP26 and all governments are kind of agreeing to fight this climate change issues together. I know many of us know what uh, IPCC is, but there are a few more who are online and students who are interested in the regional information of Africa but don't know much about the IPCC. So this is a general overview of the IPCC, uh, I would say, organogram. So we have the plenary, which is government delegations. We have the bureau. We have the secretariat that support all the activities. And we have the executive committee. Then we have the working groups, one, two, and three, and the special task group. So for this assessment report, we had a task group on national greenhouse gas inventory, and then another task group on uh, data support for climate assessment. So I represent task group uh, on data support uh, for climate assessment, and I'm also in the working group one, the physical basis for this assessment report. I'm going to talk to you about where we are with the state of the climate and then what is in there for Africa. Um, in the, in the uh, breakout session, I'm going to be focusing on West Africa. The other uh, speakers or panelists will be focusing on other sub-regions of Africa. And 
Then we will talk about observed changes in extremes and the climate impact drivers and their attribution. We're going to talk about the projection, projected changes in extremes and climate impact drivers, changes in frequency and intensity. So the information that is in the report for Africa in the stems. We also need to know the statistics. We know that there were 234 lead authors that had contributed to those assessment reports, 517 contributing authors, but importantly, 8% of this number came from Africa. That translates into about 18 of, uh, or 19. Africans that contributed as lead authors and also as uh, review authors. Um, this year, this assessment cycle, I would say, is an improvement over the previous uh, assessment cycle. And I hope that the next one, Africa will have a better uh, representation in the, in the cycle as well. So, it's not only about the information, uh, the science information in the report, but also these are issues of concern. Uh, I will be concluding with other, other issues uh, for Africa as well. Okay, so where we are in the States, uh, we know that uh, human beings, in fact, this assessment report is red coded for humans. And so we are all uh, responsible for the changes we are seeing in the, in the, in the climate system. And so we have had, um, in general, extreme events, increasing uh, heat waves, heavy rainfall events, droughts, and they're uh, with high intensity and high frequency. And there's rapid and widespread of these changes in, in all areas. Um, this is affecting many regions, and of course, Africa cannot be, be left out. We have seen uh, an increase the global warming, a warming of almost 1.1 degrees Celsius at the global level. For Africa, in the reports, we can find information on uh, well, all the regions, that's regions of, uh, of the globe, we can find information in chapter 10, chapter 11, 12, the Atlas, and then the Interactive Atlas, which is a, a novel tool now with uh, extensive um, information on each region, and it's interactive. Then we have the regional fact sheets as well. Climate change is already affecting every inhibitable, inhibited region across the globe with human influence contributing to many observed changes in weather and climate extremes. Yesterday during the plenary, I'm sure we had this information as well. Now what's in for, for Africa? So for Africa, uh, we see, I hope you can see this as the, the globe. So where you have SAH, uh, WAF, CAF, NEAF and all that is the African region. So um, we see that when you compare the, the colors, so red is increasing, uh, there's no blue, but there's um, a, a gray color, which is a report of limited data and limited literature in such areas. Now where you have the dot, we have uh, the one dot is of low um, confidence or limited agreement from models, and then two dot is medium confidence, and then three dot is high confidence. So the confidence information is um, we either we have limited agree uh, agreement of the models or limited information, I mean literature, or limited data over the region. So all all in Africa, we can see medium confidence, except for Madagascar, which is even uh, low confidence. And for Central Africa, which is gray, it means we have limited data or limited uh, literature. So this is of concern for Africa. And these are representing hot extremes. So hot extremes are going to increase over almost everywhere in Africa. What we cannot be sure of is where we have limited data. That doesn't mean that there will not be hot extremes. We just don't have the information to report on that. Agriculture is um, 
it's a key issue for Africa because Africa uh, depends a lot on rainfall for agriculture. And a lot of our economic activities come from um, agriculture. So agricultural droughts and ecological drought is also going to increase for most places in Africa. We can see for West Africa, for Central Africa, for Western Southern Africa, Eastern Southern Africa. And again, where it is without color, it shows that um, there's low agreement of, of data and low confidence. And you can see that these are all reported with low confidence. So projected changes in a stream as a function of global warming. So there are going to be many changes in climate system that is going to become larger in direct relation to the increasing global warming. This we also heard yesterday, but then it's going to be more for regions. They're going to include frequency and intensity of hot extremes, which we saw in the picture, marine heat waves, heavy precipitation, agricultural droughts, agricultural and ecological droughts in so many regions. There's also going to be increasing occurrence of some extremes, some extreme events unprecedented in the observational record with additional global warming when it is up to 1.5 degrees Celsius. So we expect the worst when we get to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Then the percentage of changes in frequency are higher for events that do not even occur frequently, and this is reported with high confidence. We had seen this also yesterday in the general presentation, that the projected changes in the streams are larger in frequency and intensity with every additional increment of global warming. So when we have hot temperature extremes over land, per each um, warming level, so we have for 1.5 warming level, we are likely to get multiples of the events occurring in frequency, and then the magnitude also in intensity is going to be high. And when we get up to four degrees Celsius, we can get close to about 10 times of such events occurring. That's for hot extremes. For heavy precipitation, we're going to have um, also multiplication of the event at each global warming level. And when we get up to four degrees Celsius, we're going to get almost three times uh, heavy precipitation. This is a global uh, trend as well. Then the agri agricultural ecological drought in, in drier regions, we're also going to have droughts that will be happening up to about four times when we get to four degrees Celsius, which we don't hope to get there anyway. So this is also reported with high confidence. Now for, this is for precipitation, changes in precipitation. With every increment of global warming, changes will get even larger at the regional scale. So mean temperature is going to be higher, precipitation is going to be higher, and soil moisture is going to be higher. So I present this for, um, for precipitation only. We can see that simulated changes at 1.5 warming, so that's at the global level, when the globe warms by 1.5 degrees Celsius, we're going to get um, precipitation changes that are even um, worse than what we are experiencing now. And this is presented up to four degrees Celsius of global warming. So this is his stress. It's going to be stronger for Africa uh, at different um, scenarios and different time periods. So at the SSP1, to 2.6 uh, between 2081 to the end of the century, we expect the heat stress to be higher, greater than even 41 degrees Celsius for Africa and, I mean, for the globe. And this is going to be worse for Africa. You can see the African map uh, in, the, in the global map. Same for SSP 5 to 8.5. It's, it's also going to go beyond uh, 41 degrees Celsius, and same for um, SSP uh, 5 to 8.5 to the end of the century. 
So as we go forward in time, as the, the globe continues to warm, even the projections are showing that uh, it's going to be worse, he stress. Then droughts is also going to be stronger for Africa, and the maps shows them clearly. Sea level rise is, um, is a concern to many regions, and especially for Africa, where we have a lot of um, ocean around the borders of Africa. Um, the change in extreme water level and the RCP 4.5, but to the end of the century, it's, it's shown, and we see that it's going to be having increasing up to about 0 0.8. Uh, meters, and then in um, RCP 8.5 or up to 2050, we see that it's going to be up to about 0 0.4 meters high. And then for RCP 8.5 to the end of the century, the water levels are going to be even up to one meter level. And this is um, a concern for especially coastal communities. So for climate impact drivers, we see for Africa, we have the heat, we have the mean precipitation, heavy precipitation, river, river floods, droughts, aridity, fire weather, mean winds, and then uh, the coastal issues. So, so um, we can see, I mean, clearly that the climate impact drivers are going to increase in, in almost everywhere in Africa. And these, the red circles means high confidence of uh, report. And the blue circle also means high confidence, but in a decreasing. So red is high, so we're going to get increases in the climate impact drivers. And only a few places we are going to get um, um, decreases in, the, in this uh, climate impact drivers. Okay, so there are common changes across the region, across Africa. Uh, mean temperatures and hot extremes have emerged above natural variability. So that's when this um, report has the full confidence of red coding thus for humans. And the rate of sea surface temperature um, increase has generally been more rapid in Africa than the global average and this is with human-induced climate change being dominant driver. It's also reported with high confidence. We have observed increases in hot extremes. So all across Africa, we have hot extremes reported and only decreases in cold extremes and a few decreases in cold extremes. Um, so these are all projected throughout the, to the end of the century. And this is also reported with high confidence. Marine heat wave have become more frequent since the 20th century, and they're also projected to increase in Africa with high confidence. Um, sea level rise has increased at a higher rate than global mean level in Africa, and over the last three decades. Then relative sea level rise is likely to virtually certain to continue around Africa. So these are all um, worrying trends for the coastal communities. Then the frequency and intensity of heavy precipitation events are projected to increase almost everywhere in Africa with, under any additional warming at the global level. This is also reported with high confidence. So basically, um, few issues of concern. Uh, we have limited data with landslides because we know uh, landslides are also extreme cases, but then they, um, we get um, greenhouse gases from a landslide. We have river flooding, that's okay, but we have few information or literature on that. Fire weather occurs in Africa, but also few information that we have. Windstorm, dust, and sandstorm then tropical cyclone in some other regions, we don't have much information on this one. Um, almost closing. So we still have limitations in Africa. We have data, we have research issues, and then we have capacity. I hope in the, in the coming years, we are able to improve upon the data for Africa, research, and then the capacity 
to also contribute in this global discourses. Thank you very much. So, Mayalen, if you are around, uh, the floor is to you. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Um, today, I will I will present a general introduction of the Interactive Atlas. It, this is the landing page of the Interactive Atlas, with its three components, and um, the figures and the regional statements that uh, were presented in the previous talk by Nana and the others, uh, can be explored in the first two components, the regional information and the regional synthesis. So, the Interactive Atlas is a novel product of the ARC's working group uh, one report. Uh, you can find the web link uh, there at the bottom right. And it's a web tool that supports the assessment done in the chapters, the technical summary, and the summary for policymakers. And it has a focus on regional changes. Therefore, uh, it provides regionalized information uh, building on the working group one reference regions and also in other sets of regions, also used in the chapters uh, for, uh, for the regionalized uh, climate change assessment. Uh, these are the monsoons, small islands, working group two continental regions, and major river basins. Um, the principal two components are regional information and regional synthesis. Regarding the first, it uh, allows to explore maps time series, and other visuals uh, from multiple data sets, from observations, and global and regional model simulations. While the regional synthesis provides or explores the confidence statements for climatic impact drivers in different categories, such as heat and cold, wet and dry, and so on. The regional information component uh, includes uh, multiple variables and indices, that are grouped in atmospheric, oceanic, and others. The atmospheric variables are temperatures, precipitation, snowfall, and wind, and uh, other indices derived from them, such as day with, max, uh, with maximum temperature over 35 degrees, frost days, or, for example, consecutive dry days. This information can be accessed or explored uh, via two different interfaces the simple interface and the advanced interface. The simple interface considers or is um, focused on global warming uh, level information. So it displays different maps for the different uh, global warming levels relative to the pre-industrial uh, pre uh, past period. Um, it also provides regionalized information such as time series and table summaries. The advanced interface uh, has further options and choices. Uh, there you can select um, also uh, periods across different scenarios and uh, different baselines. And also includes observed trends and paleoclimatic uh, information. So regarding the second component, the regional synthesis, um, here we have an example of, um, of five weather. Um, here we show, uh, in, the, in the Interactive Atlas, regions where fine weather will change with high or medium confidence. Um, this uh, example here, uh, for one uh, climate impact driver, could be also uh, reproduced or uh, explored in the Interactive Atlas. So, if we go to the main page and enter the regional synthesis, and select the first visualization, the map visualization, there we will see uh, the, how it's, uh, the, the increases on, on the change and the level of confidence for the different regions. If we change uh, the magnitude from projections to past trends, we will see there um, if, if there are uh, past trends, assessed, if have been assessed, and uh, with or without attribution. So the second visualization, uh, it's similar, but in this case, 
it provides uh, all the information for all the climate impact drivers that are uh, relevant for a given region, uh, North Africa in this example. And finally, the third visualization um, provides the option to combine different climate impact drivers through these hexagons. Each hexagon um, corresponds to a, a, a region and uh, as, I said, uh, as I said before, we can then combine different uh, CIDs up to six. So if we go back to the, um, to the main page and enter the regional information, then we go for the first component. This is the default map that we get. And note that uh, the working group and reference regions are uh, displayed over the map but you can change the, the set of regions here in the upper left corner of the map space. As we can see in the caption of this map at the bottom, this is the, the CMIP6 mean temperature change for two degrees of warming level and relative to the pre-industrial uh, period uh, for, annual mean, for the annual mean. So this um, map, this default map corresponds to the CMIP6 dataset selection in the first tab, in the dataset tab, but as you can see here, we can uh, select um, multiple data, different datasets, such as uh, Cordex regional information, and also historical model information, observations, and paleoclimate data. In the variable tab, the default is the mean temperature, but as I, uh, as I said before in a previous slide, uh, here are many other indices and variables that you can select. Uh, in the quantity and scenario tab, uh, as you can see there, the selection is warming of two and the pre-industrial baseline. But of course, as we are navigating the advanced interface, we could select other periods, other scenarios, and other baselines. Finally, we can customize or select a season in the season tab. So by clicking a particular region, we will get this kind of visuals. This, this is the uh, providing regionalized information. Uh, first, the time series. There in gray, you can see uh, the periods that correspond to this uh, level of warming. But then we can go tab by tab or select the tabs that you want, such as annual cycle, table summaries, or, for example, seasonal stripes. In this case, for example, we have the, the changes that are projected for each year um, from the historical to the end of the century. And uh, uh, we have in the y-axis the different months. So here we see that the temperature uh, will increase uh, more in the summer uh, months as we reach to the end of the century. We can also see the results only for land and only for mountains, and we can always export these results as PDF or PNG. The map can be also downloaded in formats such as NITCDF or GeoTIFF for uh, later use in a GIS client, for example. We can, of course, uh, change the selection uh, at any time of the navigation. For example, here we will here we will uh, select the mean precipitation change. Here you can see the hatchet areas. In this case, um, this uncertainty uh, is uh, reflecting or informs about low model agreement, as Nana was uh, saying before. But uh, this is the simple method in the report, and the advanced method could be also selected uh, here in the upper left corner. So uh, both uncertainty methods can be uh, visualized. In the second one consists or gives information of the um, robustness of the signal. Um, um, in addition, the icons on the right um, provide uh, further options to explore the, uh, the results. For example, we could duplicate the map and compare, compare different outputs um, derived from different selections. For example, we could compare the mean precipitation change of CMIP6 with 
the one projected by Cordex uh, Africa. Or we could um, compare the mean precipitation change at different levels of warming. And then we can always go back to the single view and continue exploring. So let me end saying that uh, there is a third component, the documentation, with exhaustive documentation and also information about uh, auxiliary material and a GitHub repository where uh, you can find scripts and information to reproduce these results. Thank you for, for your attention.